Focus looks good. Coffee pot here in case you need to mix some coffee with your, your energy drink. Yeah, I was going to say, it's it's almost gone. It's yesterday's coffee too, so it just stayed warm all night and... Uh, <laughs> Still know, tastes great. So. Oh, I love it. All right, so you just want me to start when... When you're ready? Well, we ain't got those Sunday scaries. No, no Sunday scaries, so... All right. Hey, Mustang Naz, it's Pastor Noah here. And I'm Pastor BJ. And... Uh, you're here for week two of the Yapping Pastors podcast. And we still haven't been canceled yet that's, by our sponsors and, I don't know, Patreons. Yeah. We don't have one of those yet. That's so awesome. So, I can't but if we, we did, we got we to gotta start the show with some shout outs. Um, the MVP of last week's show is Benson. Yes, Benson is the MVP. He He's dropped sick. a comment. He liked. He subscribed. I think he clicked the bell. Yeah, he watched all so, of them. All 45 minutes of it? Yep. And... MVP right there. Yeah, he's a real one for that. Yeah, um, Andre also watched the show. Oh, let's and, go. Uh, you know, uh, and my mother and your grandmother. Yes, that's so true. So what an audience size. Yeah. So, yep. It's good stuff. Well, um, this week we are, um, we're still in our series, Common Ground. Yep. And um, this week we talked about forgiveness. Yeah, everyone's simplest task in our lives is to, to forgive those who have hurt us. Yeah, that's... Um, it was a, it was a heavier message. Yeah, definitely, definitely was. We, uh, I, I think there were like, I don't know, going into this one, it was, it just it seemed heavier. Yeah. This week, where we were like, we're, we're talking about something that takes, it's not a montage. We kind of yeah. mm-hmm. just to peek behind the curtain. We talked yeah. about it a little bit, but in a lot of the things that we we watch and see, we kind of see forgiveness happen in a montage. Yep. And a lot of the like movies or TV shows, you might like TV shows have an arc, yeah. but with with a movie, you're in like you're in usually a ninety to a hundred minute like story, and so you watch that forgiveness happen over a montage. Yeah, and uh, you were actually going to share one of your favorite uh, favorite uh, musicals slash. I guess it's sort of a movie now. It's on Disney Plus. Yeah, my my favorite one of my favorite shows is Hamilton. Yep. Um, it's just chronicling the life of Alexander Hamilton, and in um, one of the like pivotal scenes of the show, it is the forgiveness that happens between Eliza and Alexander. They move uptown. Their son has just died. Um, Alexander's cheated on Eliza, and they move uptown, and it's quiet uptown. Mm-hmm. Yep. And. I think the purpose and the heart behind this song that's written, the song is called It's Quiet Uptown. And it's sung by the sister-in-law of the, so someone who is watching from the wings. Yeah. And so you don't really hear from Alexander and Eliza. And the purpose of that is that forgiveness is not usually seen by the, by the public. Right. It happens in, in closed rooms, in coffee shop conversations, yeah, like, and generally over time. And over time. And so, you know, the joke with montages are they they take like a few seconds to make you go from a beginner to a pro at yeah. something. So like every like sports movie ever where you see people improving, it's like you see them just like throwing baseballs at the backstop or you see them shooting jump shots, that sort of thing. And it's like, oh, yeah, that took like five minutes in the movie. But the reality is it's like to get – proficient at things they say that it takes like 10,000 hours yeah uh, just for skills not even talking about forgiveness kind of things where like when, for us to offer forgiveness means that we have to have been hurt in some way and I think that's probably why yesterday was so hard um, for for a lot of us as we we're thinking about the ways that we'd been hurt so to go back to your your show's metaphor um, <laughs> you know you're watching just years and years and years just happen in a song and forgiveness doesn't take place in a song usually. I don't know. Maybe you have like a rare occasion where it turns into like a Guardians of the Galaxy dance off and problems are all gone kind of thing. Or a yeah. Hamilton, like, you know, the person I'm looking can sing it out in like three minutes. But yeah, montages, man. Like, I wish that life was a montage sometimes when I was going through hard things. Yeah. But then in other things, it's like I'm really grateful that it's not a montage because it it takes time for the good things in life to get even better 
instead of just this microwave, like, oh, I'm going to get this awesome thing in two seconds. Boop, 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 boop. Um, so anyway, yeah, montages would be great. There could even be a montage of this show. You never know. Yeah, you never know. There could be. So, but yeah, so getting back to, uh, to some of the things that Nate was saying, we, we both took notes this week. Uh, what were just some of the first things that popped out to you about the topic of finding common ground through forgiving each other? Well, I think, I think the story that he used to illustrate his like point with his, um, with bringing his mom's crystal platter. We've all had a similar story. We, we've all had a, and I wrote in my notes, I said, oh, well, something that we could talk about today is what, not like, not like share our, but ask the audience, like, what is your, what's your platter moment? Yeah. What's the moment in your life that you dropped a, a platter on the ground and it's this priceless thing in your family and then you it. go back and the person whose it is, you're, and for Nate, it's his mom. And she says, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, and, and Nate even said this. He's like, it would have been better if she yelled at <laughs> yeah. him. And I, I, that's like a, such a relatable moment where it's like, I have really just destroyed something that matters to somebody that matters to me. And I, like, sometimes we feel even more guilty when we're treated with grace and forgiveness. Yeah. Have you experienced any of that? Yeah. I, when I think about like the times in my life, the, the platter moments, if you will, that, um, those are some of the hardest to accept Yeah. sometimes. I think, I think the thing about forgiveness and grace that parallel each other very well is that sometimes we don't know how to accept forgiveness yep. when it is offered to us. And the same way that we don't know how to accept grace yep. that is offered to us. It's almost like this, um, the best analogy I've ever heard about grace, I think, can be applied to forgiveness as well, is that it's it's this gift that we're given, and we have to, for the rest of our lives, struggle with the enormity of that gift. Yeah. Like, it's so big, and it's so, like, long-standing that you're, like, sometimes in the back of our minds, and it's it's a tactic of the enemy where, like, the enemy likes to bring up your past and say, like, well, you you are this person. Yeah. But the truth is about the truth about God is that God says, Well, I that's that's wiped clean. Yeah. We don't have to talk about that anymore. Well, and in our culture, you know, to quote the song lyrics that we we chose to open the, the sermon service with yesterday, we like to be people who earn and deserve things. Because, like, in our minds, most of us want the world to be fair. Yeah. And we, we want to be able to, like, expect what's coming. We want to have expectations on ourselves, on other people. And it's like, you know, I'm okay with, with things happening if I've earned them or, or if I deserve them. Even if they're negative in my life where it's like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Or, you know, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I do deserve this thing that I'm getting, and you know, I've, I've worked hard to attain that. And that's what the upside down kingdom of God does: is He says, you know, pretty clearly in Romans, "Hey, so you deserve death. <laughs> like that's the wage of your sin; it's death. But I love you so much, I'm going to give you a gift that is so beyond your ability that for you to." To earn it would just be laughable. Like, what's the best thing we can do? It's pretty sloppy and messy and broken. And then you take, like, the perfection of God and the way that the world ought to be. You know, as soon as we're in a world that is the way it ought to be, we show up and we ruin it. Because <laughs> yeah. we're not perfect. Um, we're being made perfect. But it's one of those where I like to feel like I carry my own weight. And I think that a lot of us probably do, too. And... The reality is, in the grand scheme of, of life, I'm so broken I can't carry my own weight. And that's why Jesus came and stepped into this world with his reckless um, or relentless, if you're an SMU kid, uh, <laughs> love. And he says, you know, it's not about you, it's about me. And, you know, even if you go back to original sin, original sin is when humanity made life about us instead of making life about God. And so, you know, it's interesting that we're kind of jumping to the front of the, 
the solution of, of this problem of forgiveness. Because, you know, when we had the benefit of, of being in the service yesterday, if you haven't, it is now on Spotify. Um, and it's on YouTube, and it's on mustangnaz.org slash media. So hit that pause button if you, after you hit the like, subscribe, share, bell, all those things. And uh, go on over and check out the sermon uh, so that you can engage with our conversation and drop a comment, like Benson did, because Benson's the GOAT. All right, we're back. Yeah. So, yeah, so we were kind of jumping ahead a little bit. So, so what do you think makes it difficult for us to, to extend forgiveness because we were talking like you know we we often get in introspective on ourselves i just know that for for you and i but like what makes it hard for us to extend forgiveness to people that we just don't have a common belief with what makes that hard for you well i think that's almost i it's almost because of the like it's because we don't have common ground yeah and it kind of goes back to the the point we were talking about last week where when we don't know each other's stories and we don't yep. know each other we 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 like well we hold up these like these it's our defense mechanism yep. that's just kind of at like it's just in our it's in our like worldview we are saying like i don't know if i can trust this person yeah so why would i want to why would i want to cross the aisle and talk to them yeah because I think a lot of us, it's we, we come with our hurt, yep. we come with our pain, we come with our traumas, our baggage, and a lot of those those things are valid. Yes. Those things did happen to you us. You bring you into your story. N- Nate said, your yeah. hurt is real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those th- the things that happen to you, happen to you. Yep. And that's the thing about when things that like that happen again, yeah. and sometimes they do, it's it's finding a way to say, to step back and say, well, this isn't the same situation. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's hard for us because we we go back to those hurts and we're like, yep. oh, it's going to happen again. Well, one of the phrases that Nate used was, when we keep lists, no one wins. And so, like, even if we're in a conflict, like, there may be some situation with somebody similar to me that you've had in the past where maybe similar me was kind of a jerk. In something or maybe I was kind of a jerk in something and it's like oh my gosh this is this is gonna replay <laughs> like we're just gonna be doing the same scenario on a different day and all I want to do is hit the fast forward button and get through it um, or hit the delete button and say we're just not gonna have this conversation so how do I prevent these things from happening so I know sometimes when when I have been slighted we live in a culture that loves the Jordan mentality, the Mamba mentality of like, if you've got a chip on your shoulder, sometimes it's seen as a positive. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's going to be fuel for the fire and I'm really going to show people. When it's in relationships, you know, it doesn't tend to work out so well. (laughs) It tends to just be like, wow, that person is intense for like reasons we don't understand and we actually push people away. So, you know, um, it's tough when we're keeping lists. Yeah. Do Do you feel like you like to win? Oh in yeah. Conflicts because I do. Well, and 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 that's the thing. I think that if we're honest, we all yeah. we all want to win. Yeah. It's a it's a thing that's hardwired in us, especially as like as Americans. Yeah. We are we are hardwired to want to win. As the great theologian Ricky Bobby once said, "If you ain't first, your last. So that's and he's true. a big hairy w- American winning machine. Yeah, and that's that's our desire. I mean, like, that's the that is the the Jordan mentality. Yep. We, I mean, he he was a winner and he knew it. Yep. And that's that's kind of who we all want to. We want to win arguments. We, but do you want to be known for winning or? I, I what is the what's the saying that I, I hear it all the time now it's like would you rather be known for have having been been right yeah or having been loving in a conversation yeah which could be misconstrued and people like to like politicize the word love and yeah all as as like love as acceptance and that's not the yeah. the truth of in a conversation I would much rather be perceived as a loving person. Yep. Than as a person 
who is who always has to be right. Yeah. I want to be known by my love because that is scripture would tell us. Fairly certain that is what the Bible said <laughs> yeah. is that we are to be known by our love. Yeah. I believe that's yeah, that's John that writes that. Um, that by your love you'll be known <laughs> as my disciples. And so, you know, if we're known for conflict and competition, you know, those things aren't necessarily bad because, like, here's the other side of that. If we don't have healthy conflict, no one grows. Yeah. And so if we don't have hard conversations where it's like, you know, these are the things that we see Jesus doing. These are the the boundaries that we understand of what it means to obey him and keep his commandments you know not that we are the judge and the jury and the executioner in those but you know if you can't tell someone the truth in a way that's palatable for them to hear it then I don't know that you can love them because like when I'm making mistakes if somebody that that has that change in the bank like we were talking about last week doesn't tell me how I can improve or get better, that sort of thing, and in a gentle and compassionate way, um, I can't improve. And if I don't realize that I'm that I'm sinning, because spoiler alert, pastors sin just like everybody else does. Um, you know, if we don't understand what we're doing and how it affects people, then we can't repent of something that we we don't understand. You know, maybe the Holy Spirit comes in and convicts us because that is the Holy Spirit's job to be the convictor in those situations. And, you know, praise God if that happens, but, you know, I generally course correct a lot faster if one of my mentors or one of my trusted people comes and says, eh, I think you might have missed that. So any thoughts on that? No, that's... I. I think that's the we've been talking about that on in youth on Wednesday nights about yeah. about finding people to to trust because I think that I think trust is something that is is really hard for us. Yeah. And and I might be speaking into people's lives because trust is something that's hard for me. Yeah. Trust has always been something that's hard for me where like I was I was raised in the church. I I'm a I'm a pastor's kid. Yeah. And so I was I was introduced to both the the great parts of ministry sure. and the yeah. the not so fun parts, and it was it's those not so fun parts that like sometimes live in the the back of my mind where I'm like, oh, and and just like you said, like they might remind you of somebody, yep, and but they're not that person, and I I think that that tends to happen to us when when we have like when our past hurts kind of are controlling the way that we are driving our life. Yeah. And it makes us hard it makes it hard for us to be people of forgiveness. Yeah. Well, and in the the phrase that Nate used yesterday um, as he got into Colossians 3, um, he talked about are we aligned with God in things or do we have things that we need to address? And so like understanding how our past impacts us before we have any conversation or or conflict with somebody that we don't have common ground with. You know, it's it's important, just like last week's first thing, hey, go pray. I'm like, yeah. God, am I aligned with you? Like, am I understanding what you're asking me to do in this moment? Um, or do I have things that I need to address and I need to repent of? And can you convict my heart so that I can live out your love and your grace? Um, because when we're at our worst, <laughs> we, we live in this this competitive, bitter unforgiveness. And uh, the, the Mandela quote that he used yesterday was, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And so unpack that a little bit for us. That's, yeah, that's, it's hardcore. That's, but it's the, it's the reality of, of unforgiveness. It, it eats away at us. It, it, it truthfully it poisons us. It it is the thing that hardens our heart yep. to the idea that forgiveness can even happen in this situation. And again, I want to reiterate, like your hurt is real, and these things are hard. And life is not a montage. Yeah. And these things take time. And it's it's why. And Nate mentioned this at the end of his sermon, but it's why like 
going to places to, to talk to people about this, trusted, wise, people who have studied and going to, we have a partnership with Renew Counseling. Yeah. And um, they're here on Tuesdays in our building from 1 to 8. And that's a, you can find more information at mustangnows.org slash renew. And I just think that if you're out of place in your life, and trust me, this is speaking from experience. I've been at places in my life where it has been so hard for me to, to trust that people have good intentions. Yep. And I, it's come from the hurt in my own life where I needed to talk to somebody who was completely outside of that. Mm-hmm. Who had been, who's not a pastor, who's not a, who's not like, who just is a person that, yep. and it happened with my therapist. And yep. she really helped me through a season where I was like, I am holding so many things yep. like this. And Nate's, one of Nate's, I think one of his catchphrases is he talks about this um, quote from the cycle of victorious living yep. where we live hands out, palms down. Yep. And that kind of life is is hard to get to. Yeah. And it doesn't happen overnight. It happens with with we like to white knuckle life mm-hmm. a lot of the times. We like to hold things and we're like, oh God, you can have this, but this thing that happened to me, I just I'm still so mad about it. Yeah. If you find yourself there today, maybe maybe take the initiative to step into a place like Renew, or if Renew's not the place for you, there are there are multiple other yeah. like agencies, and I know that we probably have lists and things that we can get you in contact with. Or if you're listening in another state, there are there are there are great places everywhere you might find yourself. Like yeah, for sure. Yeah, and just to go into that Colossians three passage, um, you know, one more thought on that. You know, often the other metaphor I've heard of when we're holding things like that it's like we're holding on to a barbed wire fence yeah <laughs> it's literally just hurting us or like we're holding on to a burning pot of something and it's like we just can't let go because we're like frozen in that moment it's like i just can't move on from this moment because of the pain i'm in is so much and so it it sounds <laughs> like oh wh- why don't i just do that well we're actually in fight flight or freeze at that moment to use some some verbiage around that but um you know what what we're called to do in this colossians passage is it says therefore as god's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience bear with one another and forgive one another if any has a grievance against someone else forgive as the lord forgave you and so a lot of that, you know, the, the work that you're talking about, until we have our relationship right with God, it's going to be really hard for us to have our relationship right with others. Yeah. And so we, we can't really forgive people until, one, we've experienced God's forgiveness, and two, we've asked him to help us. Yeah, because, because another point that Nate made was forgiveness is not a choice yeah or forgiveness is, is a, choice. a choice it's not a feeling yeah like i'm never going to feel like forgiving somebody who yeah. has wronged me um i'm gonna have to choose to do that and then the secondary gain is that i am going to feel better yeah when i have genuinely forgiven somebody and it's not even about them apologizing makes making restitution or any of that it's like i'm going to have less weight <laughs> i'm going to be happier I'm going to have one less thing to worry about. And if I'm not keeping a list and I'm not picking that scab, I'm free. Yeah. Unforgiveness is the prison that we choose to live in. And so while we both deeply understand holding on to things, um, that's not the way that God intended for us to live. He wants us to be free. We're called to be free and not slaves to our sinful nature. So... You know, what are the things that that you found helpful as you've tried to start letting go of some things to get out of that metaphorical prison? Yeah, I think, um, I don't know, I think getting, I think letting go of things. So that's, 
one of the Nate, Nate's final point is is letting letting it go. Yep. I think that's the because we live in that montage mindset, and I I live in that montage mindset. Yep. I want to see it. I just want to see it happen. Is I, I want to get to that point of being able to just let it go. But I I live my life. I, I live my life white knuckled. Yeah. Right. I, I hold on to the things that my my past hurts, my past traumas. Like I like to hold on to those things, yeah. and it has been a learning process through through therapy and through places like Renew, which we have a partnership with. Yeah. Um, that um, you can go to mustangnaz.org slash renew and find those resources. But it's it's through conversations, like having the hard conversations that have become healing conversations mm -hmm. that yeah. that I have found moments of saying, and it's not, I still live day to day where there are things from my past that are, that are hurting me, that have, that are haunting me. And where to use a pop culture metaphor, there's a show called how I met your mother yep. where they are talking about some of the things that have happened to them and the hurt that has happened to them. And, they've realized that they have put these people into a pit. Like yeah. we have talked about with unforgiveness. It is you put people in a, you put people in a prison and you put yourself right in there with them. Yep. And they've eventually realized that it's not those people that are in the pit. It is them. And they are being controlled by the past hurts yeah. of their lives. And it's really just them reminding themselves and it is a tactic that the enemy uses in our lives yeah where it's like you you you're not going to be you're never going to be enough because that is a half truth yep. where we are not enough without god but we we just believe that it is the the whole truth where we're like yeah. we'll never be enough and that haunts us and takes us down and rips us apart inside yeah it's just really hard to be in that situation where, like, acknowledging that you're hurt by these situations is fair and relevant and normal and healthy to to acknowledge your feelings in that. But not being stuck in them because, like, not only are you in that prison and not only are the, the people that you're bringing – well, they're not really there. They're just living rent-free in your head Yeah. Um, for the most part. Um, but the people that are closest to you – Mm -hmm. are kind of your cellmates in that in that metaphorical prison is like you know if i'm not okay and i'm hanging on to things and i'm stuck holding on to that barbed wire or a boiling pot or whatever in that freeze moment then my family that lives in close proximity to me is impacted and the people that I work with day to day, like if I'm not okay and like holding on to all this bitterness and anger and that sort of thing, it impacts those relationships. So like the people that you're actually punishing in this prison are not the offending parties. It's the people that love you the most. And so, you know, acknowledging where you're at is critical and that's why it's one of the first steps in any recovery program is just acknowledging the reality that you live in in yourself. It's like, I have issues and there is a higher power who wants to help me <laughs> and I've got a, a support system that can help me move forward. And I've got to pray for the strength to take the steps that I need to take to, to begin learning how to forgive people. Truly, yeah. truly forgive people instead of just be like, you know, yeah, I forgive them, but whatever. And I, I think it's it's in that strength that we we realize that forgiveness is not in a feeling. Yeah, it is forgiveness is is a choice yep. that we have to that we have to make in life. It is something that we have to day by day decide that we're we're gonna go on this journey. Yeah, we're. We're on a journey of grace. Mm -hmm. That's our like the Church of Nazarene's favorite catchphrase right now. Yep. We're all on a journey of grace. Yeah. And we are what what I said earlier, we're we're struggling with the enormity of the gift of grace and we are just trying to figure out how to say, Okay, 
God, yeah. I'll, I'll do what you've been asking me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even in forgiveness, like we also need to be sure that we're thinking through, you can totally forgive somebody or let go of all of the things that they've done to you and also still have healthy boundaries Yes. in your life to not necessarily just be like, all right, it's all good. Like nothing ever happened. And then like set yourself up for the same thing. Like you can choose to forgive somebody and then learn from the situation and, you know, have those appropriate boundaries to keep you safe and to keep them safe from infringing upon you in the same way too. Cause a lot of the sins that happen against me are unintentional mm -hmm. and they're my response to somebody else's perhaps normal action. You know, and there are other cases where it's not that, but most conflicts that we're talking about can be managed and mitigated by healthy boundaries and expectations. Yeah, and you can you can forgive somebody and not return to the relationship. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is that is totally an acceptable thing. Yep. Uh, because there are there are hurts and things that happen to us in this life that the offender of those things we do not have to return to relationship. Yeah, but we do still have to pray for them. Yes. And we still have to actually do more than just pray, Lord bless them, or bless your heart, or all those yeah. other southern colloquialisms. Is that the word, colloquialism? Yeah. Colloquialisms, yeah. We love, yeah. in the south, we love a good, <laughs> oh, well, bless their heart. <laughs> you know what bless their heart means. Yeah. If you don't, don't look it up. I'm no, not telling you it. to Google yeah. it because it's no. not nice. I will, <laughs> yeah. I will say that. But but we're supposed to genuinely pray for those who have persecuted us, hurt us, that sort of thing. Like, Lord, give them your best. Because when God gives people their best, they tend to see him more. And, you know, it's not like, you know, a prosperity gospel sort of prayer, that sort of thing. Like, it's just more of, Lord, help them to live in the center of your will. Yeah. Lord, help them to understand your heart more each day. Teach them, grow in them, help them expand and, and become more like you. It's not, Lord, fix all their issues and may they never hurt anybody ever again. It's genuine prayer for their best. And, and when we pray that way, it really does help us let things go. Yeah. And that was Nate's final point of yep. the, of the message is, is, is living um, as the author of the cycle of victorious living said with the, with a mindset of hands out, palms down. Yeah. We, to live that life, it is, it is being, it is us being in the center of God's will for our yeah. lives because God's will for our lives is that we, we do live as people of forgiveness and grace and we're seasoned yeah. with those things. Yep. They become the, we're, um, the, to use the salt and light metaphor, we have become salt and light when we are, when we are seasoning people with, with grace and forgiveness and in that process of, of, of letting go. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, forgiveness heals hearts and restores relationships. Forgiveness heals our heart is yeah. really the first thing that we, that we want to, to encourage you guys with today. You know, maybe our forgiveness will heal somebody else's heart, but that's the secondary gain. The, the primary goal of us forgiving people is to heal ourselves um, because when we are forgiving, we are also forgiven. Um, and, you know, if you need an example, just think of the prayers that Jesus prayed on the cross. Yeah. <laughs> Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Um, and that was a blanket prayer for all time. Everything that had ever happened ever will was forgiven on the cross. And that is the common ground that we meet on, is we're all broken, flawed, sinful people who, according to Romans, we have earned death. But the gift of God is that we might have life and life eternally. Um, you know, um, And when we live through that lens, it's easier, but it's not easy to forgive people. Mm -hmm. And that's just where we have to be able to throw away our list. And that's, that's what Nate really encourages us with, to stop rehashing, 
Stop rehearsing what we're going to say. Stop trying to win. Stop picking our scabs. And that's, that's what, we used this word last week, that's what spiritual maturity does in us, is it gives us the, the ability and the strength to, to do things that are not in our capacity. Um, because without God's help, <laughs> we're not capable of this. Yeah. You know, he is in the process of making us perfect, but he is the one that makes us perfect. And so we have to live surrendered so that we can live generously in the world around us when we are offended and hurt and that sort of thing. And, you know, next week we'll probably get into some other topics as we close up the Common Ground series. Um, you know, Pastor Nate's going to be having his surgery this week. Yeah. So be praying for him and for his recovery. He'll be out for six weeks. And we're going to have six speakers over the next six weeks that are going to, we're going to finish up Common Ground this week. Then we'll be in the Book of James. Then we'll be starting our Advent series. So. Oh, and get ready because yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm finally unleashed on the world for Advent. <laughs> it's my favorite season. We're going to yep. have a great time. Yep. So Pastor Noah is going to be preaching the, the first Sunday of Advent. Um, so you get to, to preach on something fun. And I get the last week of Common Ground. Yes. I will say, mine's not <laughs> mine's not entirely fun. We're talking right. about hope that week, yeah. so it'll be some it'll be a heavy topic. So, yeah. just a, a pre warning for all the people that have listened to this far into the yep. and who remember in six weeks. Yep. Um, it will be a little heavier topic. We're yep. we're doing a spoiler alert. Do you want to spoil it for them, or should we or should we keep it close to the chest? You know, Benson's earned it. Okay. Yeah. We're, uh, we're doing a series called Now Streaming, mm-hmm. and um, we're going to be looking at Christmas movies. Yep. And um, I chose It's a Wonderful Life, yep. which um, is really a, a story about forgiving, like, it, it's, it, it's a, it's a, it is a story about forgiveness, but it is a yep. story about realizing, like, the hope that you bring to the world. Yep. And so it's going to be a heavier topic. We are... We're going to get into some conversations that may be tough for some audiences, and I yeah. will let you know. And Yep. But at the same time, hope is always found in hard places. Hope is always found. And so, yeah. You know, and, that's, and that's what our, our hope is for this season, is that, that these conversations that we're having about finding common ground lead us into a place where we can get the wisdom from James and then live into... Now let's go and tell the world that Jesus is here. <laughs> like he's come into the world. Like this is the whole point. Like because God chose to come and dwell with us, we have reason for hope. And so, you know, Jesus coming into the world is the first act of forgiveness. Yeah. Of the story that he brings to us. So, you know, really excited for that. And, uh, you know, that's probably beyond the time that we have for, for today. Uh, as you might have noticed, we had a splice because our camera's been fighting us again. But what are you going to do? So Yeah, what are you going to do? It's been some yapping. We actually have no idea how long this podcast is, so feel free to click the 1.5 um, on the speed if you're on Spotify or other platforms. I'm sure there's other ways to do that. But, uh, yeah, any words of wisdom for the audience as we go? Yeah, I think... Um... Be praying for us this next week. We're going to fall yep. retreat. Yep. Um, it is it's gonna be a really awesome time for the life of the students, and yep. um, I, I just am really looking forward to it. I think yep. that this week, ha- I think God has something really cool for us this week, and yep. we're taking forty six people, thirty one students, group. big group. So we got a, we got a lot of adults, but a lot of adults. We do have our <laughs> we do have a good majority of our sponsor team going, and I yep. think that. With with the way that we do youth group now, I yep. think this is going to be a really cool connection point for yep. all of our groups to be together and yep, and just find some moments of common ground. Yeah, and you know, always excited to hear the stories that come back out of that. So be praying for them. Be praying for us on campus. Be sure to uh, to tune in if you're online or traveling that sort of thing. Hope that you have a safe fall break here in Mustang and uh, that you stay classy.